Mystery Man here, and in previous episodes, we touched on shooting at a really long shutter speed to get some creative effects. Now, this is popular among nighttime street photographers, but the question is, can we recreate this effect in daytime? Well, yes. So stick around to find out how. Now, to get that streaking lights effect, we shot at a really long shutter speed, like 30 seconds, which allowed the objects to create motion blur as they moved throughout the frame. Now, since there was very little ambient light at nighttime, our ISO and aperture were set so low that without the really low shutter speed or long exposure time, the photo was pitch black. Even at 750th of a second, the photo is still not black. As we gradually increase our exposure time, we see that 1 60th of a second is what the camera deems optimal. That's still too fast to get any motion blur. We slow it down to one second, and now the photo is completely white. Our nighttime photo needed at least 15 seconds to capture those streaking lights. But we don't have that luxury in the daytime. So how can we do it? Well, the answer is ND filters. Think of these things as sunglasses for your lens, except way more powerful. By using an ND filter, we can get the white photo to look comparable to the first photo that we shot at 1 750th, even though now we're at two seconds. We can increase the exposure time longer and longer until it reaches 30 seconds. And now we can see that our max shutter speed at 30 seconds with the ND filter is equivalent to 1 30th of a second without. They come in shades as light as sunglasses to as dark and powerful as welding glass. Their whole purpose, <laughs> their whole purpose is to block out light, giving us more control over shutter speed and getting some power back from the sun. We essentially make daytime look like nighttime. Nighttime, daytime. Nighttime, daytime. Nighttime, daytime. This one right here is a 10 stop ND filter from Gob. Job? Job? It came in a really nice package and I'm happy with it so far. This is not an ad, but if you want the same one, I'll leave the link in the description. A bit extreme for most things, but perfect for what we need it for. Our goal here is to shoot moving cars and capture their motion blur. It's trickier to get these shots in the daytime because of three reasons. One, the lights are not that bright when compared to their surroundings, like they were at nighttime. And two, the rear red lights are not even on in the daytime. So we are limited to headlights only. And three, this is literally our busiest intersection in town and it sucks balls. So we need a busier intersection. London, Ontario, Canada is only two hours away from one of the busiest intersections in the whole country. So we're gonna go there just for you guys. Let's use this opportunity to talk about London, Canada. It is the birthplace of both Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams. Though they prefer to say near Toronto because they're ashamed. You are from Canada. Where in Canada are you from? I'm from uh, outside of Toronto. I'm from uh, outside of Toronto. Speaking of shame, Justin Bieber himself was born here too. The non-Hawaiian man who invented the pineapple pizza lived and died here. We love putting sweets on everything, but it's okay to be diabetic because we also invented insulin. at the fake Times Square of uh, Canada and it's supposedly one of the busiest intersections in the whole country so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to do that long exposure effect and blur out all the people and maybe even blur out the cars to make the busiest intersection in the country look empty and desolate aside from getting these streaking lights ND filters are really good for making people disappear as long as the crowd is moving, they'll either turn into ghosts or vanish completely. 
depending on how long the exposure time was. This is really useful for locations filled with tourists. You can make busy places look empty and desolate by using a slow shutter speed combined with the right ND filter. Hopefully this car doesn't stop. Not only do these help us shoot really long exposures in landscape photography, they're actually extremely useful for videos as well. In photography, we spend the most amount of money on lenses with the widest aperture. Usually it's not a problem if we want to shoot wide open during the daytime, we can safely shoot at f2 or even f1.4 or wider if our shutter speed is really high. But for video, we don't have that luxury. We are limited to very few settings when it comes to shutter speed. So for example, if you want the end result to be 30 frames per second, it is recommended to shoot at double that, so 1 60th of a second. That means we are stuck at f 1 60th and have to move our other settings around. Our ISO is already at its lowest, so the only option is to close down the aperture. But if we do, we lose that nice blurred out background look. But thanks to ND filters, we can have some of that control back and be able to shoot wide open without sacrificing depth of field or style effects. To demonstrate this, we need to shoot at the widest aperture possible in broad daylight while being limited to 1 60th of a second. Here it is without the ND filter, forcing our aperture to be f8, and here it is with, wide open with our ISO up to 800 or 1000. Now my favorite shot was actually one of the first I ever took as soon as I got this ND filter. And it was kind of a fluke. Well, remember how I said that nighttime is easier because the lights coming from the cars are extremely powerful compared to their dark surroundings. The contrast is not as great during the daytime. So what happened in this photo was the sun reflected off the bus causing extreme brightness, which compared to its surroundings gave us that much needed contrast between the moving object and the scenery. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, this blocking out business seems kind of familiar, you'd be correct. Not too long ago, there was a solar eclipse and the only way to watch it safely was with safety eclipse glasses. Many cameras were damaged due to the eclipse, but luckily those glasses did work as extreme ND filters. My method was unorthodox, but hey, it worked. So, if you enjoyed this episode, slap that like button. It does make a difference in YouTube's algorithm. Subscribe to see more and watch the shutter speed episode if you haven't already. Then after you're done watching that, come back to this and this will make a lot more sense. Hey, there's my friend, Alan, Alan, Alan.